Well, welcome back everybody to day five of our Launchathon Masterclass, our five day Launchathon Masterclass. Um, hopefully, you guys have had just a whole ton of ahas and breakthroughs and just monumental dreams and vision about what you can do with a low ticket item. Uh, Melanie and I are just super excited that we could be hosts for you this week and that we're kind of have mixed emotions that it's our <laughs> last our last night together right when you start to kind of get in a habit and get in a groove of seeing each other all week long you're like okay well kind of excited this is coming off of my calendar right <laughs> like off of our to-do list but at the same time kind of gonna miss miss hanging out with you guys but there is an opportunity that it doesn't have to end tonight there's this grand opportunity to be a part of launchathon 2022 in a whole brand new program, very different than the way that we did it last year. Last year, of course, we did it live, um, or it was very interactive and you know, and kind of on demand, and we were working together very closely with all of our Launchathon members. But this year, we've automated, we've streamlined the process, and you are gonna have access to it on demand, on your own schedule, yet with the, the full accountability that comes with being a part of a group. And so stay till the end and we will describe in detail how you can be a part of Launchathon 2022. Melanie, how are you doing tonight? I'm well, Angel, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I have some friends here from out of town and they're upstairs waiting for me to go to dinner. So, um, so it'll be fun to go out to dinner and celebrate all of our new launchathoners at the end of this at the end of this evening. All right. So you guys have in front of you, like we've been through a lot, really, in just the last four days. Truth, truthfully, right? Taking a look and uh, where you where you are, what you have. Um, access to all the groups that you're involved in, all the different places you're collecting leads or have collected leads up until now, to be able to have a nice little picture of a starting point of where you're at. We created and we you kind of outlined what your entire sales funnel is, what that customer flow, that customer process is currently. Um, all the different products and programs that you are offering. And hopefully you're starting to streamline, kind of bring it in a little bit closer so it isn't as crazy, right? It, it's, we don't have to be the cheesecake factory to, to our clients. Truly, that if you've ever been to In-N-Out Burger, right? Like cheeseburgers, hamburgers, French fries, shakes, like super simple. And the more simpler, the more simplified that you can make your offerings, the less holes there are in your sales funnel, right? Easier to bring, um, bring clients in the top of the funnel and move them through, move them through your sales process. Um, we talked a lot about, hold on, what was day three? Um, if I come back with my notes. Day three. Oh, we talked about monetizing it with your book, using your book to set you up as the expert to teach the course, leveraging the book as that love letter, that that fan page to to your clients and having a book and the benefits of being a published author and the benefits of using a book as that low ticket item, the easiest thing in the world to sell. And you all created what would that book be? You all came up with the idea uh, the concept of what would that book be? If this is my sales process, this is my sales funnel, what would be the most amazing way to, to introduce that to my clients with the book? What would that book be about? And then day four, we talked about those internet giants, right? <laughs> Leveraging Amazon, Google, Apple, Facebook. Was that just, I mean, did that just light you up? Like you can be a small business owner you can be a solo entrepreneur but really build your business on the giants that have gone before you using their tools, using their resources, and truly at very minimal, very minimal cost to, to leverage those, those giants um, to build your business. And so we walked you through some of the preliminaries on how to do that. And if you're thinking I could use some help with all of this, like to get the, get the funnel, figure out my, my sales process, what items should there be? What should that book be? How do I get that book out? How do I 
that's exactly why we automated the whole process of Launchathon. We recorded, we took massive notes from the first series of Launchathon. What can we automate? What can we do better? How can we streamline it? How can we scale that? And that's what you're going to have access to in 2022. And so tonight we want to talk about the whole top of the funnel, which is exposure. How do we get people to want to read the book? How do we get them into that sales funnel in, in the first place? So comments, questions, thoughts before we dig and dive in deeply tonight? <laughs> you know, um, I'm a big believer in working smarter, not harder. So I think, um, you know, streamlining the funnel, making sure that you're plugging all of those holes, that you have a seamless integration uh, between all the stages, understanding your customer, understanding the, their journey um, and in, in um, their journey from each product. So you, so you have a limited number of starting products this um, reduces confusion. It tells them that you know exactly what you're doing because you're not offering them too many choices. You know exactly what they need based on where they are in business. And then you step them through the process based on your knowledge of your specific lane of genius, where they are and what they will need next. This is how you're plugging those holes in the funnel and then leveraging what other people have done, right? I mean, in, in um, computer science and programming, we say copy, paste, edit for everything, right? Like there's nothing, that we're finally at a place in, in society where there's, there's not really a whole lot of reinventing or, or new inventions. It's mostly reinventing. Steve Jobs used to say, you either need to be first or you need to be better. And so, um, so if you're not first, you just got to be better. And so a lot of times when you're talking about new product de development, the new actually just stands for reinventing something that already exists. And it could be something in a different vertical that you're reimagining in yours. Um, there, was this, uh, there was this article once about Procter and Gamble and how um, they made the, the squeegee, the thing that you use to mop the floor, they made it better by using the technology from diapers, right? So they, they reinvented the mop for the floor by leveraging a totally different vertical also within their company, but like how absorbent diapers are, right? Like it's kind of the perfect thing. Um, and so, it, so you don't have to think of these new things all the time. You can just look at all of the problems out in the world and there are a lot of them. And you can just think about, well, what would it be like if this was better? And the easiest way to do that is what would it be like if it was better for you? Because if you solve the problem for you, chances are your clients are going to love it too. Um, and so that's how leveraging these giants is, is so fabulous because they have invented the wheel. They've perfected the process. They've spent all the money mm -hmm. and they continue to spend all the money to do all the sales and marketing. You're just kind of riding on their coattails and it's not like the mafia. You don't have to pay them back. <laughs> right? they, you know, when they do a favor, you just know that they're going to come back and ask you know, for you to repay that favor. Yeah, no, that's not. Yeah, this is truly they have built this so you will use it and they're not going to come knocking at your door and asking you to repay the favor that's funny <laughs> thank goodness thank goodness right? Right? <laughs> okay so you know just as we've kind of been doing an assessment all week long what are you currently doing now how are you getting leads into your funnel now what are some things that or even you know pre-pandemic what were some of the things and you guys can type these into the chat um how were you 
um, were you networking? Were you uh, doing cold calling, sending LinkedIn messages? Um, email marketing, direct mail marketing. How were you <laughs> getting leads into your castle? Now, where were you finding? Where were you finding clients? Was it all word of mouth marketing? Were you doing um, going to expos, right, to meet people? Were you were you a vendor at expo events? Were you a member of your chamber of commerce or BNI, La Tip? Um, what were some of the things that you were doing? to get leads into, into your sales castle now? Or are you meeting clients? Referrals, yes, absolutely. That's a good one, right? I'm gonna take some notes. Referrals, opt-ins, awesome. You had a squeeze page. Referrals, um, events, social media posts, attending expos, speaking. Carrie says Facebook, LinkedIn, referrals, Chamber of Commerce. I was the um, chairman of my Chamber of Commerce for a little while. and. And that's where I got my start was in, was, was really involved with my local chamber of commerce. Some word of mouth, attending networking, speaking and word of mouth. This is good stuff. Great. Right? And so we've done the things, right? These are the things that we were taught to do is go out, build relationships, relationship marketing, um, connect with people before, uh, before you know, you go in and ask for the sale, building your list. Word of mouth marketing was always very good. Um, a lot of this, right? A lot of what we were taught was what I call one-to-one, one-to-one, right? You're networking, you're meeting people, you're exchanging information, you're getting on a sales call, you're following up, you're sending you know, messages. And a lot of that is one-to-one. -one. And truly, um, and I was, I should tell you, like I was involved with a leads group and it was about, 30 people in this leads group, maybe not quite that big. Maybe it was about 20 to 25, but I was, I attended this leads group with the same group of people. We met every Wednesday morning at seven 30 in the morning, every week, same group of people. Now we definitely had a great, you know, strong relationships. Like we referred people to each other. Um, we did business with each other. There was a lot of doing business with each other, but for six years, like building my business with the same group of people was keeping us. I mean, we were busy. I mean, not, we were busy enough, right? We were getting enough business to stay open, but always kind of struggling, always kind of like, where's, I, it wasn't ever quite enough to get us to what we wanted to do. One-on-one -on -one networking, networking events. Did you did that? Mm -hmm. oh, it, oh, sorry. I'm going to mute you, Miss Mindy. That's okay. Um, you know, we were attending networking events, link, like coffee meetings. I did a whole lot of coffee meetings, one-on-one right? -on -one coffee meetings until I just kind of got coffeeed out and, you know, one-to-ones and all of that. And I started doing what I called my non-dinner dinner dinner parties. And so instead of hosting just one or, you know, five coffee meetings, right. And I was drinking a lot of coffee, um, and, you know, and it was nice. You'd get a lead like, oh, I know some people I can refer you to. And here's here's a lead or here's two leads. And you go and you chase after it. Right. Is it possible for too much coffee? Right. Um, so I started hosting my my non dinner dinner parties. Do you guys remember like the, the dinner parties of the 60s, like your parents or my grandparents, like they would invite you know, a dozen people over for dinner and everybody said, boy, girl, boy, girl. And they'd have these really eclectic conversations. And, and this was how they met people. Right. And it was really, you know, fun, but I didn't want to host dinner at my house. It was business. And so it would look like this. Carrie'd say, Hey, Angel, do you want to meet for coffee on Tuesday? I'm like, great. Let's meet Tuesday, two o'clock. Then Wendy would come along. Angel, do you want to meet for coffee? I'm already meeting Carrie on Tuesday and two. Why don't you join us? And then I'd see Connie. Connie, let's get together for coffee next week. I'm already meeting Wendy and Carrie. Why don't you join us? Alan, why don't you join us? And I would start to do this one to many instead of just doing one on one coffees. But I will tell you, I have been a one to many girl since I, I, I remembered this story when I was in high school, I was a freshman in high school. And um, I, I babysat the neighbor kids and here it was coming on New Year's Eve and I had to pick what family was I going to babysit for because, you know, I had to choose very wisely, like which one was going to be the most fun with the kids 
and that they were going to pay the most because New Year's Eve, they paid extra, they, they paid you know, bonuses for New Year's Eve. And so I was like, oh my gosh, which family am I going to, am I going to pick? These kids are probably going to be the most fun, but this family is probably going to pay the best. And this one probably going to come home the earliest, like, which one do I want? And so I ended up putting up flyers and passing around and inviting all the families that I babysat for to come to my house. I would babysit all of their kids at my house. My mom would be there to help. And I did my first one to many event as a freshman in high school. And, and so I have been a one to many girl, like as long as I can remember. So Melanie, this is like my closest thing to optimization that, that I think kind of fits into your, into your category. So one to many. So no more, no more onesies, write that down. No more onesies. We are selling our knowledge, not our time. And we are not scheduling one-on-one -on -one meetings with people who have not qualified for our time. This is not, we're not selling, we're not meeting and greeting, we're not getting to know you unless you truly want to, right? If you truly want to, amen all day long, build relationships. I'm not saying not to build relationships, but as a small business owner, you will never build a million dollar business without leveraging the power of one to many and leveraging the power of exposure and what I call OPP, other people's platforms. So the benefit of building out something automated and having a book as your low ticket offer and having a very streamlined sales process means that you can go out and in two interviews a week on somebody else's podcast, on, you know, be featured in a magazine, speak on somebody's stage, do a, a radio interview, be featured in the news, leveraging OPP, two interviews a week, that's a hundred new audiences that you are in front of and leveraging a press release every, every month to alert the press, right? Share your good news, all with that single call to action, highlighting that you are the author, the best-selling author of this book, right, that establishes you as the expert in this space, can, can create the momentum and the, um, the significance of leveraging and building your list every single week. And then we talked about yesterday in the monetizing, right, and having 200 book sales a month is $5,000 in sales. If you leverage those, those interviews as and promote your book during all of those features, two interviews a week, one press release a month, you get up to a place where you're selling about two. I want you to focus. The goal is selling 200 books a month to create that $5,000 in residual sales from the book. That doesn't count what you also sell as your programs and your services. That is one line item, right? That is one um, you know, one line item that doesn't have to put clients on your calendar, frees up your time and is leveraging, leveraging other people's audiences in order, in order to build that. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about the Google yesterday. I love when people put the word the in front of Google. Um, we talked about the Google and how, uh, having press releases being on other people's stages, having consistent media week over week will help the Google um, recognize who you are, differentiate you from anybody who has a similar name, similar business name. But the other thing that I have found, um, and I think uh, Wendy suffers from this as well, is that the more you're out there, the more you attract people coming to you for requests. And um, sometimes these requests are pretty amazing, presti prestigious ones, right? So like I got a request the other day to be in a magazine of global leaders in tech. Like how cool is that? And it's mainly because they can find you, right? So they're doing searches around innovators in technology. Other people are doing searches around innovators in finance. And then because you have so many search results for these keywords, your name comes up. And so then they investigate you um, and they reach out to you if you fit into their uh, criteria for qualifications. Um, and so there's so many side benefits, you know, cherries to go on top of the Sunday, so to speak, just by 
just by being out there and, and like putting yourself out there in all these um, different ways. And how many of you um, are in uh, owning your own business because you want to build a legacy? Right. And and so what better way to build your legacy than to actually be known <laughs> by tons and tons of people. Right. And the only way to be known is to be seen and be heard and um, and to to have a broader reach. And that's what the power of media does for you, because you only have such a sphere like you can only influence the sphere that you're in. But when you go to your local media and you have an amazing story, then your regional media will pick it up and, you know, it'll grow from there, right? National media, so on and so forth. So just so many side benefits. There are, there are so many. And here's this, the beauty of all of this is that there, there are people, there are outlets out there that are looking for guests every single day. You will never run out. All we're looking for is a hundred. And you know, and like Melanie said, the more often you put yourself out there, stages attract stages. Media attracts media. People, when you're on a on a show, they'll ask you, you know, who else do you think? Who else would be a great guest here? And who else do you know? And it starts to get to be a really small world of 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 people who are actually quali qualified and quality guests that get referred over and over again. So as the author of the book, you have really streamlined your message. You have set yourself up as the expert in the space. And then to have this clear opt-in that allows you to scale it. If you're trying to send everybody after a, an interview to get on my calendar for a phone call, it's the kiss of death. Right? You're, you don't want 40 looky-loos coming and filling your inbox and filling your, your calendar every single week. You, this is the piece where so many entrepreneurs at the end of the day, at the end of the week, they've had call after call, they're answering questions, they're serving, they're giving, they're providing all this value. But if it doesn't turn into sales, my husband and I, when we, um, when I first started traveling and, and speaking at small business expos, my first four sm small business expos, I came out with a big fat goose egg, no new clients, no revenue. Like it was like the first one kind of sucked. Right. I'm like, shoot, like I got to get better at this. The second one, like, oh damn, like we're spending money to travel. I've paid to be here. I've invested in printing and all this material. My, I've left my family behind, like, well, actually my husband came with me, so I didn't leave my family behind, but it was really like, this is going to be a really expensive lesson. And after the fourth one, I was embarrassed. I was now thinking in my head, like, does anybody even want what I'm selling? I started to really doubt that it was ever going to take off and really ever start to work. I mean, you know, you just kind of go down this, this trail of what the F was I thinking, like that I could do this, that I could make this impact and, you know, go into a strange city and, and, and take people from never hearing from me to trusting me, you know, to invest in a thousand dollar program. But number five. Number five, I like it finally clicked like something. I stayed in my lane. I just, you know, I would go in and I would watch other people who were good at it. And I was learning. I was taking lessons. I was just an absolute student. And, and event number five, I had eight student, yeah, eight new clients enroll. And so like that, like it went from ick, 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 right? To absolute turnaround. And I will tell you the difference between a good expo and a bad expo was one thing. Did we make money? It didn't matter like how many people were there, like who the sponsors were, like the, the size of the room, like it just didn't matter. Did I make money? If I didn't make money, it was a bad expo. If I made money, it was a good expo. The difference between a good day and a bad day for an entrepreneur, did you make money? And if you go too many days in a row where you're not making money, you know, that turns into to a week, then weeks, then months. Right? Of course, you're going to get yourself in this really space, this, this dark space that does it work? Does it even matter? Does anybody ever want it? But when you are making money, 
and you've got those days and you've got this scroll money, you're like, oh, somebody enrolled, somebody opted in, somebody's going through the process, somebody bought my book, right? And you're getting this, like, all of a sudden you're like invincible. You're like, I got this. I can do this. Like, I'm, I'm a happy person when I make money. And I know they say money can't buy happiness. I will tell you that my, some of my happiest days <laughs> were attached to a dollar amount that, um, of revenue. I, I, not all of them. But many of my happiest days, especially as an entrepreneur, have been attached to a dollar amount. And that's the brilliance of having a, a low ticket item that is your book, leveraging the power of OPP exposure and bringing them streamlined, automated all the way through the process until your register rings. And you can put that on repeat, right? Two interviews a week, two interviews a week two interviews a week. At first, are you selling 200 books a month? No. Will you get there if you quit? Nope. The only way to get there is to continue and to maintain and keep your eye on the prize. And then, and then it's, and it's sunny days. It is sunny days after that. Yeah. So I have a similar story, but but completely different <laughs> in, the, in that um, I didn't sell for the first couple of times that I was on stage either. And I was, um, I was getting frustrated. Not only was I not selling, but I was, um, I had people engaged, uh, but then they would, they would leave sometime before, you know, the sales pitch. And, um, and, and I believe, that my heart wasn't in it because for me selling from stage is not authentic like I need information from you I need to know your current state your future state and you're like how familiar with technology or how comfortable you are with technology so there's um it doesn't make sense for me or at the time I should say it didn't make sense for me to sell some blanket thing that everybody would buy because um, because it was really this kind of custom thing. And also, uh, people just don't want to learn how to do technology, right? They don't want to learn how to create web pages. They don't want to learn how to build funnels. They don't want to learn how to uh, create integration and automation. And, um, and so for me, uh, I didn't see the results the day of the expos. But what being on stages did for me was it gave me that notoriety. It gave me that celebrity status. It gave me that, um, that uh, remembrance of people that had seen me. And, and when they started seeing me over and over again, um, and I would talk about different types of technology because technology is such a broad, um, umbrella that when they were ready to take that step or when they needed advice, when it came to technology, they knew who to go to because they'd seen me a number of times. And also I was on this speaking tour with other people who were bringing on clients and those client, I mean, those speakers, um, were working with me. Right. And so they knew the value that I was providing them. And so they would in turn give me referrals as well. My business is 100% referral based, a hundred percent. I never sell from stage. Now, now I have products that are completely digital and, and low ticket, but back then I didn't, it was completely done for your services and not services that I wanted to sell from stage because like I, like I said, I didn't know where you were in business and whether this was a right fit for you. And I'm a big believer in not selling you something you don't need, but then also, um, do I want to work with you? Right. I'm also a big believer in not working with people I don't want to work with. So, um, and, and because there's so much interaction, right? There's so, there's so much um, trust between requiring somebody to get something done in order for me to get something done. And if, if it's not happening on both sides, 
the result is not going to be successful and it's going to end up being my fault. <laughs> and so hat you you got to work with the right people you got to know what you need out of your people and choose accordingly and so even if you're not making money even if it's not a good day it doesn't mean that it's not going to be a good day in the long run right they do say that the money is in the follow-up and um and follow up is definitely where the high ticket comes into play. So being on stages every day is great for low tickets. It's great for passive income sales, but the follow up is where you're making the big money. And you only want to do that with the people you actually have, like it brings you joy to work with them. I can't hear you. <laughs> we have a couple of resources to help you get started in creating this media exposure and getting booked on other people's stages. Um, one, I have a Facebook group called Need a Guest, Need a Guest, and it has, we just crossed over today, 3,000 members in the Need a Guest Facebook group. Um, this is a great place. If you have a podcast, if you have an event, you have a stage, you have a magazine, and you're looking for speakers and guests to interview, you can put your request out at need a guest, needaguest.com. I'll put it in the, in the chat. Um, um, this was kind of our answer to our media matchmaking, right? That there are some other resources out there. Um, Help a reporter is very popular, but it's very popular. And so anytime they send out a list of, you know, requests from journalists, you've got to be, you've got to be on it right then and there because they get inundated and it can start to feel like a, a, a full-time job. Like you almost need to hire somebody to manage the help a reporter, re, you know, requests that come out and have your um, uh, responses like pretty much ready to go because if you don't get them when they first come out you just you tend to miss out on a lot so we created need a guest um, it's a Facebook group you can post your need a guest and then if you want to be a guest you can respond directly to those requests um, those requests directly to those podcasters those stages and there's been a lot of media matchmaking that happens on that site. And so feel free to go in and, and, and check in there, check in every day, because every day people are posting um, need for sometimes even last minute, last minute guests. So if it's a good fit, in fact, Wendy, I tagged you in a post that came out today. Somebody was looking for um, yeah, very specific you. I mean, they might as well describe you. I think they said black women entrepreneurs that talk about financial mindset. I mean, it was like, <laughs> We just put Wendy's name in here. Because it was just, it could not have been any, any more, you know, any more brilliant. So I follow up on those. Um, and when I know they're a good fit, when I, for any of my clients, I tag you. So I keep an eye out for you. Um, sometimes I'll miss them, right? But if I see a post that I know is perfect for Connie, perfect for Wendy, perfect for Melanie, right? I will tag you in those posts to make sure that you, to make sure that you see them. Second uh, resource is through, through the Google, right? Mm -hmm. When you type in your topic into Google, you can click on, uh, there's the little sub bars, right? They say shopping and images. Well, there's one that says news. If you click on the news for your topic, it's going to give you an instant media database that um, of journalists, of media outlets that are covering your topic. And how many of you can imagine, there's probably a whole lot of different media outlets that you never even knew existed in the world, but all the good ones are there too, right? Entrepreneur, Forbes, Inc., Harvard Business Journal, your local, you know, local news stations, all of that. And so it's a great way. So just to get in the habit of once a week going in and putting your topic in and seeing what news outlets are covering your, 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 you know, it's a way to build your organic media database. And when you click on those articles, you can co collect, connect directly with the journalists and start to build your own personalized organic media database that's very specialized for you. 
And so if you're doing that once a week for, you know, a couple of months, you probably build up about 50 to 100 journalists that are on your media database that you can now reach out to on a monthly basis with your media pitch, with your press release of what's new. My book is coming out. My book is out. My book is a bestseller. I'm on a national book tour. I'm speaking on all these stages. We've created our automation. We have this great opt-in. We're hitting this milestone. So every single month, you can reach out to the journalist with a press release because that is the language of media. So I encourage you every single month to put it, write a press release, submit it directly to your local news stations. Right? Your local news stations are looking for current events and news and human interest stories. And then if you wanna distribute that press release, we offer a distribution service that helps to put that out there on the Associated Press, the AP Wire. And because we put out so many press releases every single month, our press releases get a pretty kick in kickback of, of um, a pickup for those news stories. So I know Beverly's press release just came out. Connie's press release just came out. Wendy's, uh, we just got hers approved. So her press release is about to go out. And so putting out a press release every, every single month is a brilliant idea. It gives you instant credibility, instant media pickup, um, those, all those media news logos. And of course, what are you gonna put in that press release? Your call to action. Get them in, talk about your low ticket funnel, right? Your opt-in, um, the fact that you're a best-selling author and then send those press releases out to those journalists and connect with those media opportunities. Say yes to two interviews a week and one press release a month. Yep, and you're gonna include some keywords. Those keywords are specific to you and what you're trying to optimize on the Google. And, um, and your call to action is going to be a link back to your promo page so that people, when they click on it, they have one task to do, one. <laughs> um, so you're not going to send them to a page that's like, here's all my products and services. Here's all the ways to connect with me on social media. You're going to give them one task to do, which is to opt in or buy whatever it is that you're promoting in that specific press release. Right. So how would you like to have the templates to help you to write press releases? How would you like to have access to the media databases and how to build those media databases? We are, when we open up our launchathon in about five minutes from now, you can gain access to 24 masterclass trainings, including creating and building your list, marketing, getting media and publicity, advertising, building your funnel, filling your strainer holes, right? Um, how to fill it, how to build it, how to bring people through. We're gonna provide a blueprint for your success. You'll have access to a members portal, a private Facebook community. You'll have 24 weeks of accountability, reference guides, templates, tip sheets, marketing materials, email scripts, all everything that you need to take you from, from create it, automate it, launch it, monetize it. That's our CALM, C-A-L-M uh, acronym, create it, automate it, launch it, and monetize it. And Connie, I know that um, you were able to go through our Launchathon uh, program last year, and you're here tonight. I want to say it's so fabulous to see your beautiful face. We were showing off your book a couple of days ago. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. And, you know, I wanted to come on because both of you have been so instrumental in, you know, pushing me, helping me keep focusing and funneling down. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, you kind of get lost and God knows I've heard about the funnel and the this, and I've been to spoke on stages. I've heard Melanie for many, uh, many years and everything. And I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And it's like, I don't even know what that means, <laughs> you know? And when I met Melanie, I was like, okay, I'm going to be really honest. I'm old and I really don't know a lot about technology, but here's the thing. I am a really good learner. And so, right. I I've learned a lot and angel, I would hear you speak. And, and I think that's the brilliance of what you do. You make it really easy. You make, you bring it in. There are like bumpers 
right? So you're, you're bowling with bumpers on each side and it's just uh, pushing, pushing you down the road you need to go. And from what I hear, it's even better. And we had Wendy and Pamela and we had an incredible experience. And obviously you learned a lot from that and, and made it even better. But I mean, it, was, it really forces you to do what you wanna do. And from, uh, you know, I've spoken on, I do exactly what you say. I try to do two podcasts a week. I just spoke with Beverly um, a couple of weeks ago and, um, and, and then get up myself out on stages. I'm speaking in Nigeria on Saturday. I mean, that's the wonder, pretty amazing, right? That's the wonder of, of all these, you know, technology. But it, I sold a lot of books. My clients um, are like, oh, wow, you're, you're like everywhere. So they, they already know me and see me, whether I'm on Zoom or they're in the studio, but it just, again, I mean, it just pushes you up, up the ladder. And um, I love the process. I got up at four o'clock in the morning. That's the time I was, gave myself to write from four to six. And I really just buckled down and did it. Um, and then when there was trouble, because there always is, you know, there's a dip, right? You start off high and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God. I don't know what to do. There was so much support, not only from both of you, but from the people in the group. And that I think is, is it's so unique. But now that you're doing automate, autom doing automation of everything, it's, um, it's stunning. I mean, both of you are brilliant. And if there's ever a problem, you could always reach out to either of you. And um, I think that's, it, it's a great course. It just makes you just, keep pushing forward. And what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And um, I love it. I love it. I love both of you. And, you know, I can't, I can't say enough. I mean, it's just, it's great. And um, I'm so glad it made me write a, another book, you know, cause you say you're going to do it and then life gets in the way. It's so easy, especially when you have a, a business. Um, and um, so it just, it just really puts your foot to the fire. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Connie is amazing. And one of those people that when you have a meeting with her, you're like, oh, I'm going to feel joy today. <laughs> <laughs> she's just, she's just such a delight to, to hang out with and meet and talk about. And honestly, the most perfect client ever, because she's just so, she's a sponge. She's open to everything she does what you tell her to do um, and she gets results as a result because she she's not afraid to fail so she's not afraid to get started right when the pandemic hits she had a brick and mortar and she you know called me with the oh shit moment excuse me um, and said what do i do and we came up with a strategy and she implemented it but she wasn't afraid to use her iPhone, which at the time was old. Um, and she wasn't afraid to uh, put out some crappy videos at the beginning, not that they were, but you weren't afraid to do it. Um, because it was all in the name of let's just get started. Let's just like serve the clients, make sure that they can do what they need to do. And then um, and then we'll improve over time. And now she has a membership site that has hundreds and hundreds, like 500 videos or 600 videos. I think we reached the max of how many videos that we could have in the membership site. So we now have to upgrade the technology to support Connie. Um, and so, and that was just in a year. And I call her now the Zoom MacGyver because her clientele is um, not technically savvy. And so they find all the ways to uh, not know how to use technology. <laughs> and Connie just texts me, I give her some clues and she figures it out and she just goes with the flow. Um, and it's, it's brilliant. And I loved one day, um, we were talking about the book and the process and we were asking for feedback and you're like, it's a shit show, but it's done. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's like, but in the, in the, in the thing is, is it's not the process. It's the shit show. It's the fact that like, 
um, you've pulling all your content together, you're getting it all situated and, you know, thing like technology might not work all the, the right ways, the right time, but you're working through it and you're getting it done. You're not one of those, what is it? 79% of America who promises they're going to write a book and they just never do, right? You are the 20% that actually get it done. So brilliant to you. Connie, and thank you for coming on and sharing your story because, um, God, you're just such a joy to work with and so happy that for all of your success, all of it. Thank you. We had so much fun. We had so much fun with our launchathon, uh, our you know, initial group. They are now the alumni. So anybody who enrolls and signs up, you are going to be in a Facebook group with the original alumni group from a launchathon. And it's just a fabulous community to hold you accountable to, you know, to kind of somebody to reach out to when it is kind of like a shit show. And you're like, now what do I do? Where do I go? And so we want to, we want to include you in all of that. And so Melanie has put the link in. If you go to that link, you will see everything that you will gain access to. We have priced this in a way, this is all automated and scalable and digital. We have priced it at a price point that makes it really easy for you to jump in tonight. It's three payments of $600. Um, and that's for November, December, and January. And the whole program will be released on January 12th. So you have time to take advantage of the payment program. There'll be some fun things that we'll do in the next 60 days, kind of pre-launch of opening up the Launchathon for January, 2022. And so you can make three payments of 600 or a single payment of 1500. And anybody who enrolls tonight, kind of our quick start, take action bonus tonight, if you sign up tonight, you will receive a free ticket to attend the Media Mastery Bootcamp in February in Orlando, Florida. It's February 16 through 18. It is a live event. You can attend virtually or you can attend in person. It is a thousand dollar extra bonus of value for everybody who attend or who enrolls tonight. Um, it doesn't matter if you do the 600 payment or the $1,500 payment, but if you do decide to enroll tonight and make a one-time full payment of $1,500, we are going to include a free press release for you at a $500 value, which means we will write it and distribute it for you and distribute it out onto national and even international um, media outlets. So that is the extra bonus. If you decide to jump in tonight at that $1,500 value, we're gonna, you're gonna get the ticket to the boot camp and that extra uh, 500. So really it's a wash, right? An extra thousand dollar ticket plus the extra $500 press release. Um, so we kind of pretty much give you, it's like a wash if you enroll tonight with that one-time payment. But we would love to have you jump in and play with us and be a part of Launchathon 2022. And uh, let's get your let's get your low ticket offer out there into the world. Let's launch it, launch it. Well, let's create it, automate it, launch it, and monetize it. And Angel, I think we can also throw in a custom book cover. So you <gasps> saw Connie's book cover the other day. We did that one. We've done Wendy's. Um, I don't know who else you showed, but. Um, there is a difference. There is a slight difference between a Canva book cover and a, uh, a professionally graphic designed book cover. So if you're planning on putting your headshot on your book cover, then we will create it for you. Yeah, that was a, a lovely book cover, right? So to have a graphic designer to design your book cover, um, again, $500 value for, for having that. So the bonuses are a free ticket to the Media Mastery Bootcamp um, a, and a book cover and a press release, a professionally distributed press release. So those are for those who want to take action tonight. We get it. You want to think about it, you know, sleep on it. The, the portal will be up and available to you. 
um, we do launch on January 12th. In order to have access to the class on January 12th, your, your program does have to be paid in full. So if you delay a little bit and you wanna do payments, then we're gonna have to squish some of those payments together before you have access to the program. Um, and so that is available to you. If you guys wanna reach out, you have any other questions, you can private message, private chat. We'll be here for about eight more minutes to answer any questions that you have that we can get you started tonight. Hopefully this has been super valuable, super valuable use of your week learning um, about all the different platforms and all the different ways that you can leverage a low ticket item to create a six figure business. I'm, I'm, I'm going to type these in the free ticket to the boot camp, uh, professionally, a professional book cover design. design and, and then if you do the payment in full tonight, you get um, a professionally written and distributed press release. So there's a lot of bonuses in there. The bonuses are more than the cost of the class. So hopefully <laughs> that entices you. And you just want to play with us, right? You're like, I just want to be around Angel and Melanie. I love what they've created. I love the tribe. I love the community. And I just, it's time. And I know I can do it on my own, but it's far more fun to do it in a group and with a little, little kick every week to remind you to get it done. Yeah, and most of you already have a book. So what did Angel say is the best way to sell your first book is hashtag my next book. So um, we've been talking all this time about making money from this book and leading into a funnel. So you make money off of the follow-up products, but you'll also, as a byproduct, sell your first book. Um, and if you don't already have an author page on Amazon and you have a book, you should go create that ASAP. <laughs> Definitely have your author page sent up on Amazon. Again, OPP, other people's platforms. Amazon is a great sales partner for you and they create so many opportunities for you. You can't set that author page up until you are a published author with a book on Amazon. So if you already have your book on Amazon, um, authorcentral.amazon.com, I think is the, is the website. Any other comments, questions about- I wanted to jump in. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Chelsea. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm like a bossy, pushy person. So I'm sorry if I'm like um, volunteering, Amy. <laughs> But I invited my friend Amy on here. And so she's the only person that y'all don't know. And I didn't know if she would be willing to come on and say hi and introduce herself. Because um, she actually texted me over the weekend and said, hey, do you, do you know anybody? I need to um, publish a book. And I said, yes, <laughs> you need to talk to my friend Angel. And then this all happened this week. So it was just perfect for her to jump in. So I don't know if she is wants to say hi or Amy, do you want to say hi? No pressure, Amy. <laughs> and you can say hi without coming on camera if you choose. <laughs> or you can even type it in the chat, right? right. Type in the chat. Well, Chelsea, I love like, you know, the universe, there's no no accidents, no coincidences. And sometimes the the timing of this is really more providential and divine than we than we realize um and you are such a spiritual person like i just yeah no accident that amy came to you this week and you discovered it so amy would love to have you if you have any questions about it um you could see here pamela wendy and connie went through our um went through our program the last time we've automated it we've made it even better this time and because of the automation that we've been able to build into it, um, you know, we were expecting to raise the price. It was $5,000 last time and, and it was going to be, that was our beta price. And we were expecting to come out with a 10K package for Launchathon. But because Melanie is so brilliant at automation and optimization, we decided to price it lower. And so shocking the socks off of everybody um, to actually offer it to you 
for this incredibly low price. So one payment of 1500, if you guys wanna jump in and play with us, you can spread out the payments, three payments of 600. Um, and so if you wanna do, and if you wanna do something anywhere in between, like, well, I wanna pay 1200, I wanna pay 900, I can pay a thousand tonight. Like if there's something in between that 600 and 1500 that we can make happen for you, we're happy to do that. Happy to do that as well. But the, the initial minimum, to get started with us um, to be a part of the program is a $600 deposit tonight. And that gets you into our queue. Yeah, and there's, um, we haven't, we, we didn't pull up the link, Angel, but um, there actually is this cool option on PayPal where you can tell PayPal that um, you want to buy this product. It's a $1,500 product um, and they will pay it in full for you and then give you monthly payments for what is it, six months or something like that? Yeah, anywhere from four to four months on. And so you can pick um, your payment plan with PayPal. So you can take advantage and get the discount with us and pay in full using PayPal. And then you can stretch the payments out using, using PayPal. And you don't even have to apply for credit with that. Uh, Carrie. Yes, giving us so much juicy value. We'd love that. I love that. Um, okay, fabulous, fabulous. Any other comments, thoughts? Y'all can find us on social media, right? We're both, um, you can direct message us on social media if you have any questions about the Launchathon. Uh, make sure that you guys click on the link. So you have the lowticketlaunchathon.com website pulled up so you can see. 24 masterclass trainings. We're gonna create and build your list, marketing, getting media, getting publicity, helping you with advertising. This is a killer, right? For a, you know less than, you know for 30 bucks, you can do some amazing ads on Facebook. Um, building your funnel, filling your funnel, filling the holes in your strainer, creating that blueprint for success. You'll have access to our members portal, our private community. 24 weeks of accountability, all the guides, templates, tip sheets, everything that you need, including social media scripts, social media calendar, social media templates, and everything that you need for an advertising and 90-day marketing plan. We threw in the kitchen sink for you. And so it's here. We hope you take advantage of it. We would love to work with you and bring your dreams to reality in 2022. I'd like to just say that the this five days was worth more than fifteen hundred dollars. You know, just the information we got, and I went through the launchathon, and you know, of course, I got more information that you know, even though I got it in launchathon, it's just that when you're in a different stage, you garner different information. You know, so hey, I'm gonna tell you, it was, it was worth the money to me. <laughs> I love that, Wendy. Awesome. Right? And we do. Like you come back and you're like, oh, now I'm here. And I would have people even come back to boot camp and say, I've come. Did you say that before? Like, I don't remember you saying that before, but you're in a different place. Your business is a different place. So we're always learning. And and you know what? And Wendy, this might even be just a little bit better from what we learned through the launchathon because we got better, we got better too. Yeah, I mean the the People going through it, you know, we we received feedback along the way, and uh, we made it better as we went, and we learned from, um, we learned from like the like I said the other day is when you're providing value to your clients, you unearth the problems that you cause, and so when we realized that we started to look for solutions to those problems as well and built those in as well. So, um, so this is a completely reimagined launchathon, and it's um, 100% automated. So that's even better. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, you guys have the link, lowticketlaunchathon.com slash calm, create it automate it, launch it, monetize it. We threw in some bonuses for those of you who take advantage um, before midnight Eastern time, we will throw those bonuses in for you. And those of you that just need to sleep on it, you can sleep on it. We'll still be here tomorrow and we'd love to have you join us. 
for Lunchathon 2022. Uh, unfortunately, um, I wish I'd heard about this earlier because I'm actually on another program where they're expecting me to actually do it. I prefer to have it automated. Um, and I'm going round and round in circles because I can't see the screen, you realize that. Um, and I can see that there's two people talking, but I can't identify who's who. Um, but this is a fraction of the price I've paid and I'm still going round in circles. So I wish I'd have come across it earlier. I should have joined you last year, but I was doing, uh, well, the last time I was doing a, a leadership course, two mindset courses, uh, and a public speaking course all at the same time. I couldn't join you the last time. So I, I wish I'd known about this earlier. We got here as fast as we could, Alan. We got here as fast as we could. And so we start in January. If something happens and you're like, I think I can do both, this is not a big investment. We would love to have you. Um, otherwise, we'll see you in 2023. <laughs> Angel and Melanie, it's it's Pam. Sorry, my voice is almost gone. Um, I wanted to just let Alan know that um, I too had, um, and Melanie knows this, when we were doing our interview, she knows that I had already enrolled in two different programs and I paid cash ahead of time, which made the money crunch worse. But with the PayPal in place, I mean, it. if you can swing it at all, I would highly recommend it. And so I just wanted you to know if you've already gotten into a course, this one will top it. Hey, it's not the money I, I can pay the 1500. It's that um, this morning I was at a meeting at Probus. I'm the vice chairman at Probus. Mm -hmm. I uh, meant the school children that have fallen behind at school because of bullying and abuse. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a trustee at a local community center. I, I'm still writing other books. Okay. I, I, I contact carers and support them, something I've done every week for over 11 years. And I'm involved in the community, you know, so many different things. I literally start at six in the morning and I struggle to get to bed at midnight. So to join yet another course, <laughs> I just don't have the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes that's the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We will probably do it again. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, this was fabulous. Hopefully this was super valuable. We enjoyed being here with you. We are going to miss you, miss being together every single day. But again, if you still want to hang out with us because we're just a whole lots of fun, <laughs> you guys know how to do that. And so cheers, everybody. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Holidays. And uh, we will talk with you soon. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. You too. You haven't Thanks. got another meeting following this, have you? Like last no, time. not tonight. We don't. <laughs> oh, it's a pity because I don't have a meeting tomorrow morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we had to edit last night's video, so it's taking a minute to get it out there. But we'll get it to you. That'd be great. Lovely. Thank you. Yep. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Well, let me just copy this. Uh, okay. Oh, Thank Amy, you. Amy, yeah, sorry we didn't respond. Or Chelsea just had mentioned that you were brand new, Amy, and um, she wanted to just give you an opportunity to say hi. Um, but that's it. Okay, bye, Alan. Oh.